Gunman kills 25 people in Australia's worst massacre. At least 25 people killed in Australia's worst massacre. Today's killings could be the world's worst shooting massacre. The highest previous death toll appears to have been the so-called McDonald's massacre in California that left 21 people dead. The Port Arthur toll is certainly more than three times greater than any mass killing in Australia this century. Good evening. Confronted with a story that was simply too serious for them, the tabloid television newsrooms, struggling with the responsibility of making sense of it, could only treat it as something for the Guinness Book of Records. And worst of them all was Channel 10, who decided that a world-beating performance ought to be put in perspective by a sports reporter reviewing the previous record holders. The most recent killing to shock Australia was in the outer Brisbane suburb of Hillcrest in January this year. Four adults and three children were shot dead in a murder-suicide. In July last year, three people died in the New South Wales coastal town of Crescent Head. The February massacre of Karen McKenzie and her three children at Greenoff, 400 kilometres north of Perth, was Western Australia's most horrific recent killing. August 1991, Strathfield in Sydney, and the shopping centre killing of seven people by Wade Frankham. And in Melbourne in 1987, the killings which introduced modern-day massacres to this country. Obviously, those journalists thought they couldn't convey the scale of the horror without pictures, and the pictures they had weren't sufficient. I'll come back to the pictures shortly. That was Sunday night. Even with more time to gather information and consider their approach, Monday morning's newspapers still felt the world record tag compulsory. Some of the writing owed a debt to Wisdoms. Believed to be the world's worst massacre by a lone gunman. Probably the worst civilian shooting massacre by a lone gunman in history. Australia's worst mass killing this century. The worst massacre by a single gunman in Australian history. Australia's worst killing. It was the worst mass killing in Australia's modern history. Australia's worst ever mass murder. The world's worst gun massacre. World's worst gun massacre rocks a stunned nation. Australia's worst ever mass shooting. Scale is everything. If one brutal murder confronts the infinite, what about infinity times 35? And their fundamental insecurity was showing. How else can you explain the cringe implicit in telling us that this was not just a world-beating statistic, it was a world-class story. The Port Arthur massacre has made headlines around the world. It's believed to be the world's worst one-day massacre by a lone gunman. The scale of the massacre has shocked not just Australia, but much of the world. At least 32 people have been killed, some of them children, by a lone gunman on the Australian island state of Tasmania. 32 morts innocents, une vingtaine de blessés graves. Now to the massacre in Australia. Una strage che non ha precedenti in Australia. E Australia, Nantobu, Tasmania to no kankochi de. That's how the world heard about one of Australia's darkest days. A horrifying tragedy putting Tasmania on the maps of news bulletins around the globe. World record puts Tasmania on the map. From New York, NBC sought details from a Channel 7 newsreader. Not such a good idea. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think anywhere in the world with an event like this happening would be in a state of shock. And more especially, Tasmania is a very small state of Australia. You probably know there are about seven or eight states in Australia. Now, back to this question of pictures. All this sloganising about world records and cringing about being put on the world map is a direct function of camera people being excluded from the scene. Television's terrified of having to communicate ideas, and particularly horror, with words. It's hardly any better with print, who are competing for the attention of a readership which is really a viewership. By Tuesday, the newspapers had pictures. Murdoch's Hobart Mercury treated their picture in a most extraordinary way, unfolding their tabloid format into a broadsheet front page. This is the man. Our Tasmanian audience has his face obscured, but not the Mercury's readers. In a facile and futile attempt to avoid being in contempt of court by prejudging the man's guilt in Tasmania, where he'll be prosecuted, the Mercury explained the picture thus. This is the man whom Tasmanians want to face 35 murder charges. This is the man who allegedly... Did they think that loan allegedly protected them? <laughs> 
who allegedly, calmly, chillingly, coolly and brutally stalked and gunned down men, women and children. This man is Martin Bryant, 28, a man of mystery from the Hobart suburb of Newtown. All three Murdoch papers distributed in Tasmania, the Mercury, Herald Sun and the Australian, showed the man's face. No doubt gambling that identification would not be an issue in any prosecution and, dare I suggest, assuming that the authorities would lack the courage to take on the most powerful media corporation on earth. As to that, we shall see. Launceston's examiner had a better news picture, the man in custody and arriving at hospital, but... Mr Bryant's face has been blacked out for legal reasons. For the mainland audience, this is the picture as the examiner could have run it, but didn't. The DPP, Mr Damien Bug QC, placed all media outlets on notice yesterday that he would pursue contempt action against any broadcaster or publication whose coverage of the tragedy prejudiced the trial of the alleged gunman. And if uh, pre-trial coverage by the media in some enthusiastic uh, desire to disclose as much as possible to the public uh, results in a person being deprived of a fair trial, I wouldn't call it a legal nicety at all. Since then, the DPP has given notice of prosecutions of the Australian, the Mercury, the Age and the ABC. Meanwhile, the Courier Mail thought it had a bit of a scoop of its own, a picture from the Newtown High School's yearbook. A young Martin Bryant at Newtown High School. Only it wasn't. The photograph was not of Martin Bryant, but of Michael Robert Bryant of Hobart. Who may not be prepared to settle for something as little as a one-sentence apology hidden between advertisements on page two, three days later. But there's more to be said about News Limited and that photograph. First, it was run by every one of Rupert's Australian prints, the Advertiser, the Herald Sun, the Telegraph, the Courier Mail, the NT News, the Hobart Mercury, and of course, the Australian. And Tasmania can join us for the close-up. In no paper was there any fiddling with the picture, the eyes were shown thus, except in the Australian. There, the whites were painted in and the pupils were darkened. Result, the eyes of a crazy killer. An enormous number of people spotted the enhancement, such a genteel euphemism, and Wednesday's Oz carried this explanation. An attempt to remove shadow from the subject's face unintentionally led to the complete removal of colour from the whites of his eyes. No editorial instruction to alter the photograph was given. We believe you, Mr Kelly. Hundreds of thousands wouldn't. Paul Kelly didn't mention a botched attempt to remove shadows when he spoke to AM. The treatment of the eyes uh, was a mistake. Uh, it was done in the uh, production process. The important point to make is that there was no editorial direction uh, given, there was no editorial instruction given to uh, change the eyes at all. Researching this question for our own purposes produced a squeal of protest from the editor-in-chief at the Oz. Dear Mr Salter, on two occasions this week, we have had reports of Media Watch contacting staff on the Australian, or within the company, in relation to our publication of the photograph of the Port Arthur gunman. The Australian's boss then made a demand he would have laughed at if it were imposed on his journalists. I would request that if Media Watch has any queries, that it should approach myself or Mr Schmidke directly. Don't wait by the phone, Paul. When he was talking to Suzanne Smith from AM, there was a related question about that photograph that Kelly seemed reluctant to answer. There have been claims that uh, the photograph was obtained from Martin Bryant's house, is that correct? Do you wish to answer that, Mr Kelly? Well, the Australian obtained the photograph from the Hobart Mercury. Would you please answer the question? Did members of News Limited staff, though, enter Mr Bryant's house to obtain that photo? Certainly. Nobody from the Australian did. So you're saying someone from the Hobart Mercury might have? I don't know. An uncharacteristic lack of curiosity for such a senior journalist? How did the Hobart Mercury get the photographs of Martin Bryant and hand them on to all those other Murdoch papers? Doubts persisted over how the photographs, which appeared on Tuesday, had been acquired, the police public affairs manager, Mr Jeff Easton, said. 
He said he was unaware of any complaints of a break-in at Mr Bryant's suburban new town house. Well, the occupant was otherwise engaged, wasn't he? But two journalists employed by the Mercury seem terribly familiar with the interior of the house. From the street, it offers no clues as to the identity of its inhabitant. But Stuart Potter and Sue Bailey report that on closer examination, it reveals some details of Martin Bryant's lifestyle. Thereafter, it becomes obvious that Potter and Bailey have been through the place with a fine-tooth comb. Display cabinets are cluttered with old dolls, figurines and trinkets. Figurines also sit on picture rails in the lounge room and entrance foyer. The kitchen, too, like the rest of the house, is cluttered. Any photographs among the clutter? The Mercury's editor is Ian McCausland. May we ask you, Mr McCausland, who obtained the photograph? And from where? We've inquired of the police, and this is what Mr Easton told us. One constable was on duty guarding the house, and that constable definitely did not give Potter or Bailey a guided tour of Brian's house. Police suspect a third person was involved. Two people distracted or otherwise engaged the constable, while a third party entered the house. McCausland's paper, indeed every Murdoch paper, has managed to ignore the story about their photographs. The Canberra Times, a non-Murdoch paper... Photographs of alleged Port Arthur gunman Martin Bryant that appeared in the media had not been officially issued, Tasmanian police said yesterday. And the examiner? They may well have been obtained by other means, a spokesman said. So a couple of unanswered questions remain. But there's no question about a certain Fairfax editor. I refer, of course, to Peter Cullen, who rejoices in the title of editor-in-chief, albeit of the Illawarra Mercury. His column on Saturday was headed... Nothing but a bullet for Bryant. And what followed was the sort of thing you'd hear from a lonely drunk in the corner of a public bar, raving to himself as everyone else shrank away from him. Our system of justice demands a trial for Bryant. Why? It's called the rule of law, Mr Cullen. We know you're not much impressed with it. What more do they need to prove his guilt? Due process and the consequent satisfaction that justice had been done. It's a strange society in which we live. A madman kills 35 people and then society goes out of its way to make sure all his rights and privileges are observed for a fair trial. Sickening, isn't it? Cullen is a powerful argument against foreign ownership of Fairfax. Surely Conrad Black doesn't know he has an editor like that? Good night to you.